Hello people, I'm the Real Comic Gamer, and recently me and Slick Moth sat down for about 40 minutes and just talked about Star Wars The Last Jedi, gave our full spoiler thoughts on it, so this is part one, and part two is going to be on his channel, which will be linked down in the description down below, so if you want to see the rest of us talking about it, it will be linked in the description, and there's no real order to this, we're just talking randomly, whatever thoughts pop into our head, and it was pretty fun, I had a lot of fun discussing the movie with someone else, so again, link in the description, go check out his channel, please do so, especially if you want want to see part two so anyways on to the video again spoiler warning heavy spoiler warning <laughs> what what do you want to talk about first with this movie because there's a lot of uh there's a lot of things to cover here yeah there's a lot of things to talk about and i think that that is actually one of the problems i have in the movie so let me just say this i, I don't want to just you know crap on the movie i've said this before and somebody in my comments actually said this really well um this is a good movie but not a good star wars movie and that actually kind of encapsulates my opinions on this movie. And one of the things that I've noticed with this film that Ryan Johnson tried to do is turn everything into a plot twist. Like whatever you expect and uh, Kylo, because ultimately they stay on the sides that they were on at the beginning of the film. But almost everything else, they, Ryan in particular, tried to basically you know upset your expectations as to what the film would be you know like oh do we think that luke and kylo are gonna fight in the end of the movie nope not gonna happen and i feel like that's actually the case for a lot of things in the movie you know snoke dying etc i feel kind of like that but at the same time i feel kind of like he like they almost went risky with some things and then played it safe like they took everything to the edge and was like mm -hmm. hey we're gonna do something cool actually now we're just gonna play it safe like they did that a lot like in the beginning with leia my jaw dropped in the theater when I thought she died within, like, the first ten minutes of the film. I was like, holy crap, this movie's got balls. Did not see this coming. And then she just, Superman flies through the air, and, like, <laughs> everyone facepalmed, and it was just so stupid. And and they do that a lot in the movie. Like, oh, who's going to turn, Ray or Kylo? Actually, neither. They're at the same as they were at the beginning of the film. And you have at the end with Come Luke. On. It's like, oh, man, this is cool what he just did. Oh, he's dead. Like, there's a lot of things where, like, they took it to the edge where, like, something big was going to happen, but they're like, nah, we're going to play it safe instead. And I thought that was, like, Ugh. I don't know if that was the Disney effect or if that was actually what Ryan Johnson wanted to do. It's just disappointing with how so many things, like, they almost did. Like, you know how awesome it would have been if Ray and Kylo joined forces? Because going into the movie, no one saw that coming. It was all in the trailers, but everyone's like, yeah, they're going to they're gonna back out of this. No it's way. It's mislead. Everybody thought it was a mislead. Yeah, yeah. no way they're going to actually do it. And then in the movie, it's like, oh, man, are they going to do it? Oh, no, they're not. They're playing it safe. Of course. Like, they play everything safe in this entire movie besides killing uh, Snoke. That was, like, the only big risk they took in this movie. Everything else was playing it safe, which was really annoying safe to me. The Force Awakens, too, so that's kind of their mantra at Yeah, this point. true. So I think that also one of the biggest problems with this movie is actually, in my opinion, the biggest problem with this entire trilogy is the disparate amount of time we spend with the original characters versus the new characters. And as I tweeted after I came out of seeing the movie a second time last night, I th I'm pretty sure Rose has more screen time than Luke Skywalker, you know, the Asian girl. And that's just mind boggling to me. That just makes no sense. It's like, in what world does you know, do you approve of Rose having more screen time than Luke Skywalker? It just makes no sense. She is by far the worst character in the movie. I see so many people are like, who's worse, her Star or Jar Wars Jar? History. Yes, I think she's worse than Jar Jar because Jar Jar is really annoying, but Jar Jar doesn't straight up ruin good scenes. She straight up ruins good scenes. Like with Finn, when Finn is going to sacrifice himself and it's an intense moment. And okay, first off, how, first off, we see that Finn keeps going while everyone else pulls off. Cause Poe's like, no, it's not worth it. You know, he learned his lesson. His arc is complete or whatever. So he's like, let's turn away. And then, and so Finn's like, nope, he puts his mic up so he doesn't have to like listen to anyone or whatever. And he pulls up like the, the stick that the speeders had that would slow him down a bit. And he went full blast. Rose had already turned away, but is somehow able to catch up with him. That makes the stupidest decision ever. Finn is going to kill himself while saving everyone which is the one thing they can do because at this point in the movie they don't know the Millennium Falcon is coming or Luke is coming at this point this is Correct. the only option it's not like earlier with Poe where he had multiple options he just chose to be an idiot no here this is the only option she chooses to endanger both their lives and if they both died they accomplish nothing because they wouldn't have saved anyone so she made the stupidest decision ever and then she gives the cringiest line of dialogue in the entire movie See? where she's like yeah. It's not about it's not about uh, fighting the people you hate. It's about saving those you love. That was the worst bit of dialogue in this entire movie. Tim, and then I loved in the background how the the door gets shattered. It's like, yeah, great job. You saved everybody. <laughs> so like you saved Finn at the expense of literally everybody else, and they're gonna die too because they're right below like nine ATATs. Like okay, so she was annoying. I mean, even when you go to the the little gambling world 
crypto, oh whatever the hell it's Wait, called. When she I takes think. that stupid, when she takes the, uh, whatever, the now saddle off the it. horse, yeah, it's like, now it's, I was like, what the hell is, what kind of Disney crap is this? Prince is dead, but I saved a horse space alien <laughs> thing, so we win, good job. Um, yeah, you know, I'll be honest, I actually didn't dislike that er, that planet as much as a lot of people did. I thought the visuals were really good. I agree there, and... it looked cool, but that was it. It, it definitely it, it was one of those things and I saw an article that I actually really agreed with and it was kind of like this world or Finn and uh, Rose's storyline is actually like a lot of video games that are really annoying. It kind of reminds me of like a lot of video games. I mean, like Arkham City where you like, oh, I just want to punch Penguin in the jaw. But no, you have to go disable these three towers and then do this and do this. And it kind of felt that way. It's like we spent an hour trying to get onto this ship to disrupt this thing. And ultimately, in the end, it didn't really matter, like that entire storyline. I mean, it did matter, but it just felt a little drawn out. No, ultimately, in the end, yeah, you're right, it didn't actually matter. It was futile. There was no point. Because in the end, like, they're at, again, like I said at the beginning, a lot of stuff that happens in this movie, they go through a lot of stuff just to be at the very beginning again. Like, nothing changes. For them, nothing changed. Like, they did nothing. Phasma died. That's it. And no one cared about Phasma. She should have died in the first one. She was in a trash compactor that exploded. Yeah, she's kind of one of those characters that... She's worse than Boba Fett. I think, I, honestly... I see everyone calling her Boba Fett, but she's worse than Boba Fett. Because Boba Fett, at least in Empire, Boba Fett served a plot purpose. But in this, she serves no purpose. Yeah, she definitely serves no... I mean, besides like a cool little action scene or their substitute of a lightsaber fight, which wasn't in this movie. And by the way, is that not just insane? This is the first out of eight Star Wars films in the, in, in the episodes that there is no lightsaber fight. Hugely disappointing. I mean, there's so many places they could have done it, too. You could have had it right after, you know, um, Kylo kills Snoke. You could have a badass lightsaber fight with Rey and and Kylo. But no, we're just going to have five minutes of them force pulling a lightsaber and then splitting in half, which <laughs> is kind of stupid. It doesn't really make any what sense. What if one of them just, like, stopped pulling and just, like, walked up and physically grabbed it? It was just like, I'm just going to, you know, like, they're still <laughs> pulling it with the force and they just walk up and grab it with their other hand. Like, you know, that works. But I think... Right. Like if you, in the trailer, remember that part where Ray is on the island. You see her running at someone with her lightsaber. That was not in the movie. So I wonder if that was, was a lightsaber not. fight. I wonder if that was going to happen. Training. It might have just been her training. Maybe she looked really angry. Whoever she's running at, though. Yeah, it, it's weird too because the the training it, it's kind of not equivalent to Yoda being on Dagobah. No, not at all. Because we, we, we see Ray, so she lifts some rocks and then she swings at the air. Well, she didn't even like lift rocks on the island. She does that later. She's fine with it. She accomplishes it perfectly, she even though she never did that the on the earth. island. Yeah. Earth, and then she swings her lightsaber, but not even under the discretion of Luke. Luke is just watching from a while away and is like, oh, she sucks, and then he walks away. <laughs> so it's this is not like, you know, Yoda teaching her about the Force. I mean, he does have the little lesson to her about the Force, which, which I thought was cool, which kind of leads me to, to what I want to talk about. What, what did you think about Luke? I, I'm sure you have a lot of opinions on him. I've seen a little bit of what you thought, but um, All right. well, overall, how did you think they portrayed Luke, and would that be the way that you would have done it? Because it's definitely not the way I would have. Portrayed. All right, so there's one big problem I have with Luke. Well, first off, Mark Hamill killed it, like just amazing. Mark Hamill. I don't know why he hasn't done more on-screen acting. I hate the fact that he got typecast in Star Wars because the dude's amazing. Like he is fantastic. But anyways, um, the, my main like the way Luke was set up in the Force Awakens, I didn't like because it didn't match Luke at all. Like the character we know to just have one bad day and give up because he's had plenty of bad days. And he never gives up. And even Mark Hamill in all the interviews, because I had like people in my comments saying, you misunderstand Luke. You don't get how the character is. It was like, Mark Hamill, the guy who's played him the entire time, said this doesn't yeah. match up with Luke. And he even said at the premiere, after watching the movie, saying, I still say Jedi's never give up. But, you know. And so, anyways, um, with everything that J.J. Abrams had set up, I wasn't a fan of, so I understand Ryan Johnson had to do some stuff, but the main thing I was mad at Ryan Johnson for was the flashback, where Luke is standing over his nephew's bed, ignites his lightsaber, and is about to kill him for crimes he has not committed. Darth Vader, the guy who has slaughtered younglings and millions of, well, thousands of other people, and is like the second most evil guy in the galaxy, has already committed plenty of crimes. Luke saw the good and was like, no, I'm going to go risk my own life, sacrifice myself to try to bring him back. But this guy who hasn't, th my nephew who hasn't committed any crimes, yeah, he might do something in the future, so I'm going to murder him right now. Th and this is pre-damaged Luke. This is before all the bad stuff happened. So this makes no sense. It doesn't line up with the character at all. 
Like that was my main problem with it because everything on the island is like okay, that kind of makes sense. Was, like, wasn't that after six when he's raising? Yeah, it's it's after six, but like, but yeah, it's pre damaged Luke. It's po it's um because it's post Return of the Jedi, but it's pre you know all everything bad happening to him. So he's he's still Luke. Like nothing incredibly terrible has happened as far as we know. Like he's still Luke. He still got his green lightsaber. Saying. He still believes in the Jedi. Yeah. And it makes no you. sense. Like that part was like really took me out of it. It's like that's not Luke. That makes no sense whatsoever. This guy who saw the good in Darth Vader sees the absolute evil in his nephew who's done nothing yet. And doesn't even talk to Leia about it. His sister. You think it'd be like, hey, thinking. there's some stuff going on. Also, I think it's incredibly lazy to just say Snoke seduced him. You have to show something of that. You can't just say this creepy old dude that looks like the most evil person on like the entire galaxy, he seduced him. It's like you have to yeah, explain it. Anyways, Snoke's that's my rant. Like Snoke has like like overtaken him or like come to your Jedi training facility and like physically turned him for I mean like I, I agree with you. They had to explain or do something with that, but it's like Snoke just turned him well. I mean, yeah. people can be redeemed. You kind of saw that with your dad there, Luke. Yeah. Um as as we saw. So I think that at one front, I kind of like the idea that he's like super hesitant of anybody turning super to the dark side. But I agree with you that he that it's sort of out of character of Luke. And I I, I agree to, with you overall. To go that, that I just far, see the, the point of that. to like almost act it out. I could see like maybe like being an idea that passes his head. Like I could end this now, but now nah, I'm not going to. Instead, he took it as far as standing over his sleeping nephew and ignites the lightsaber. Yeah. Like that is really dark and not even close to how Luke is. Basically, you know, made creation of the Knights of Ren because then Kylo's like, hey, uh, our master is basically trying to kill us all. So what, what the yeah, hell happened so to those guys? They could have just said they're the Praetorian Guards now, what? but they're nowhere in this movie. Oh, they're not the Praetorian. They're going to be a nine. That's what I think. They're going to be a nine because if you think about it, there's no way. I mean, okay, the resistance is hurt really bad, right? I mean, they have pretty much nobody left. But at the same point, you have Ray. Like, can, can I talk about like that real quick? Beast. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to say that, like, no, I feel like in The Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams set up the uh, Resistance to have, like, thousands of people. In the beginning of this movie, there's, like, 200 of them. That was weird, too, right? Because yeah. in the original trilogy, when you think about the Resistance, you never see, like, thousands of them at once, right? But you also realize that it's not just, like, okay, on Hoth, this is not, like, the entirety of the resi of the Rebels. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like there's more out there, and it's like a it's like a wide scale conflict. This is like, this is the conflict. Like literally, the entire army of the resistance, and pretty much all of the first order on this planet. And it's like this is all their ATSTs. There might be like one other well, dreadnought or whatever. Yeah, that's the thing. We know there's more of the of the first order because they said you know we took out a dreadnought, not the dreadnought. So that that was a big plot right. hole. Was that whole like chase sequence because it was like hey. You used the TIE Fighters once, they blew up the, you know, the bridge and, like, killed a lot of the leadership of the Resistance. Why not do that again? Why do you only use the one thing that worked once? I hate it when they do that in movies. They did it in Logan, where, like, the harpoon gun worked. Why wouldn't everyone have a harpoon gun? But they use it twice. Same in this. It's like, the TIE Fighters worked. Why did you only use it once? I don't get that. You know, <laughs> I, I will say, though, that... This movie overall, it, it, it wasn't a bad movie. Now, I will say, though, when, in, in rewatching this film, it have you seen it twice? Yes, I saw it Thursday and then Friday. This movie is not that fun to rewatch because no, really, because there's no action in the movie. Like, there's no awesome lights. But like, even in The Phantom Menace, which everybody hates, right? Like, even then, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to get that dual fates, badass, you know, Darth Maul fight. And it's fun and to watch movie, them chop up battle droids in this movie there is some cool action at the beginning but as a general rule there's a lot of you know like them going to this you know casino world and having their subplots about animal cruelty and stuff like this and you know it, it really is is pretty drawn out and the action is not that awesome and there's no awesome you know luke kylo fight there's no race kylo fight or yeah, or anything really Exactly. There's one cool action scene in the entire movie, and that's the. It's awesome. I love that uh, that throne room scene. I think it's better than every action scene in The Force Awakens. But that's it. That's awesome. all you get. I love. I love the hyperspace ship that 
I you know, like it goes it. through the, the first order ship. That's it, cool. It looked cool. The problem is it, it shouldn't have happened because now in Star Wars it's like, hey, why don't you just have these guys go into like, you know, autopilot and hyperspace through other ships? Like it's a big plot hole now because like, why don't now, they just do the, that every okay, time? Okay, let's talk about this. There are so many plot holes created by this movie. Yeah. Yoda can Yoda can create things in the real world as a force ghost. You saw that, right? Yep. Lightning. He put the tree on fire as a force ghost. So why doesn't Yoda just put a lightning bolt on his on Kylo's goddamn head like <laughs> Zeus and just of existence? Like literally. I, because he a, doesn't see it as his purpose. I want in that scene, I love that scene, but I thought I, the whole time I thought Obi-Wan was gonna show up. Time. I thought Obi-Wan was gonna show up during that scene because then he like he still goes to the tree. I'm like, Obi-Wan's gonna appear in the tree doorway. Obi-Wan? Oh, and then he didn't. I was like, oh please but i i said that i think i thought it would have been cool if they had obi-wan and anakin there like all three of them oh that would have been cool just kind of like hanging out that would have <laughs> been sweet um i i think that yoda kind of makes a lot of sense because it's like he was just trying to train um ray or whatever and yoda obviously trained luke and it kind of shows this contrast of like yeah luke is kind of a really crappy um trainer or jedi master he like, kind of sucks um did did the bait get you? It got me when he like takes the torch and he like it looks like his return of the Jedi lightsaber and then he ignites it and it's just a torch. I was like, it has it's his return and then it was just a torch. But he's like there yeah, on the mountain. Funny, funny you say that because it only did on the second time. I was like, actually that kind of looks like a lightsaber, but I don't. I wasn't paying attention the first. The first time. time they baited me so hard. Um, so I don't know. I kind of, I kind of idea of him trying to like change the Jedi and, and him talking about how the Jedi kind of like failures i actually but love that I, idea just don't like the idea that i think that he would acknowledge the jedi has failed in the past but want a way forward for the jedi you know and, yeah. and not be like oh the jedi should just end because they suck he's like no we should think about what the jedi has done wrong in the past and how we can change it i think that's more what luke would say i honestly um, I, I love the idea of him realizing that hey the like the Jedi and the Sith have both sort of perverted what the Force is, and in actuality, the balance is somewhere in the middle. And I love that idea. The problem is the movie does like it did with a million other things I mentioned, where it takes it to this cool place and then just goes back to just zero. It resets. It back, yeah, yeah, because it's like the Jedi should end. There's this play, like you know, the and the Sith aren't the good guys either. There's just you know the Force. But then in the end, he's like, oh, actually, you know rays of the last jedi and the jedi are the good guys and also it made no sense for him to cut himself off from the force because i thought he realized that the jedi and the sith are the ones that had done crappy things with the force it wasn't the force itself but no he's like nah the force in itself is bad so i'm gonna cut myself off from it. it's like that makes no sense and they took it to a cool place and then just went back it was i said this like a million times in my other videos but it's one step forward one step back is like the entirety of this movie yeah and i, I do wonder speaking of that where they set up something interesting and they kind of take it away i, I wonder what direction they would have taken with um kylo and ray like journey together and sort of like having trouble thinking of what kylo had in mind for like his ruling of the galaxy i feel like he would kind of be a little bit more moderate you know not like super evil if that makes sense like in that moment he killed snoke and he kind of seems like he has this glimpse of light in him right they're, they're kind of maybe this whole movie that maybe they could they could actually have some realistic like compromise i guess or you'd think like i thought that was really good cool. I, I love that scene where he's like your parents were, ju were junk traders you have no place in the story you mean nothing but you don't mean nothing to me and then he reaches his hand out he's like please and i love it and also adam right. driver absolutely kills it like he sells that performance so well and i was like yeah, yes cool. and the ray's just like no nah, i'm absolutely perfect in every way so i'm infallible so I'm just going to go back. I was like, what the, why? Why can't you have him join? That would, that would take it in new directions that would fit, that would line up with Star Wars. And because I see a lot of people being like, you don't like it because it's new. I like, it's like, no, I don't like it because it's stupid. And yeah. it's stuff that doesn't make sense. People like that would be that. something that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, the people told me that I, that doesn't make any sense. That's not at all. I don't like it. If nothing else, you could have done a lot of new things with these old characters. But now what we look at is we have a situation where all three of the old characters are gone and we, we see the framework for these movies. And really what Disney had planned to do is basically focus on one of the old characters, Han and seven, um, Luke and eight and Leia and nine, and just kill them off one by one in each movie and ultimately phasing them out. And then moving into this new trilogy where I guess like, probably 10 11 12 or like ray is the master or whatever um and i think that's really a shame because 
you look at the original trilogy, they're ensemble movies. And what I really wanted to see out of these three movies is Luke, Han, and you know Leia interacting with one another with these new characters. I'm not saying we don't have new characters, right? I, I understand that you know these guys are older and there has to be a new generation. So keep Ray and all them. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that, but the fact that Luke never spoke a single word to Leia in this entire trilogy, Luke never spoke to Han. It's it's a huge missed opportunity, and it shows where Disney is sort of you know gone awry. I think I was really looking forward to the scene where like Chewie's there. He's like, "Wait, the Falcon." He's like, "Where's Han?" And then like nothing's ever mentioned again. Besides, in the end, where he's like, "Kylo's like, I'll be with you always, like your father." I thought they were gonna mention Han more. You think he would add more of yeah. an impact? But instead, there's like nothing after that scene when he's like, "Where's Han?" So yeah, that's the end of part one. If you want to see part two, that is going to be on Slick Moth channel. I'll have it linked down in the description down below if you want to go and see it. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later.